Hey, everybody. I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and we're here with Dr. Don't you hate that? Dr. Molly Miller. It's just a lot of pressure is what it I It is say. a lot of pressure. It's just like... <laughs> but I have, to, I have to at least, you know, we have to acknowledge that. You spend a little bit of time putting it together, you might as well acknowledge it, right? I know. I use it so infrequently, but now it's like kind of fun to say. I'd say like the first week it was fun to say when I got it. And now when I get introduced this way, I'm kind of just like, uh... Uh, Okay. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Molly Miller. Hi. <laughs> no, I'll t- you know what? I, yeah, it's just, uh, whatever. So let's talk about your playing. I love the way you approach the guitar. I really do. You do an amazing job of making sure that everybody knows that you're conscious of harmony, melody, dynamics, and time. It's really apparent to me in your playing that you you really play with all four of those entities. Thank you. Yeah, no, that's, that really is actually like kind of my mission because so much uh, music I feel like is di- like, di- like when I'm teaching or when I'm thinking, it's like, like focusing on like what you're talking about, like melody, storytelling, dynamics. That's like for me, I'm always like, like when everything's at the same volume, it's like someone talking to you at the same volume. You don't want that. <laughs> Yeah. No, not at all. Um, and you're also you you tease a lot with with your time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I think I've tried to organize my playing to represent myself as best I can, and that's like always the mission. Yeah, that's the goal is to be like this is who I am, this is how I think, this is how I feel, and to accurately express that on my instrument. When, when, I, when I hear you like play a melody, whether if it's an improvised melody or, or an actual melody, you know, I'll hear you like hold off a couple of the notes, just that, just that nanosecond to just kind of, you know, I wouldn't even call it behind or in front of, I would call it held off almost. And, uh, What did you hear? Da da da. You know, <laughs> the ears just the ear just wants to go. Uh, where? And then it, <laughs> then it's there. And then there's the other thing about your playing that's really fun, is you always know where the melody is when you listen to you play. For me, the brain is an insane thing that so much can be going on at once. But for sure, like whenever I'm playing, the, I'm like the melodies here of the, the song when I'm improvising and then or wherever it exists in my brain. And then there's definitely like another melody getting created on top of it being informed by the, the melody of the song. So where does this approach come from? I think music that resonates with me and like thinking it's about like I'm, I'm into a wide variety of genres and people and players. And I think what it is, is like the people who I'm drawn towards, like, I feel like I'm hopefully ideally just like an, an amal- amalgamation of them, you know, just like all these different things that I love is what I try to take on and put out and it has a mix of those people. And that's what I am. Cause I am like, you know, I grew up playing music. My brother's a drummer too. So I think like, I'm always into something needs to feel good. You know, I think like, like if I think of like the pyramid of music, it's like time and tone and then melody. I say like melody is king or queen. You know, it's like those things are like the biggest part of the pie. And then there's a lot of other things that inform it. Um, But I think of this like musical pyramid. Yeah, because it's like, who am I drawn towards? I'm drawn towards people that like, tell stories that are playful, that like bring you in, that um, you want more of, you know? So like, that's why like a lot of my songs are kind of short. It's like when I have my trio with with Jen and Jay, it's like, we are on the same page of like creating a story and like kind of nodding towards like old records where they were like, you know, you only had a couple minutes to say something and you had to like, that was really enough times. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I spent I spent a lot of time studying jazz, and I think I hated. For me, there was something so thoughtless about like going to gigs, which I still do sometimes. And it's like, okay, let's play a tune. I'll play the melody. I take a solo. You take a solo. You just will trade fours, and that's the end of the song. It's like, no, that's not the song. That's just like wanking over a song. You know, a song is like <laughs> a story, like with oh, or without lyrics. It's oh. like, like, what's the intent, and oh. how do you like? 
how do you express it with you know so yeah that's what i think oh. a lot a lot of the thought process is bless you my dear <laughs> bless you my dear i i can't tell you how often i i try to explain that to people and you just did a beautiful job of saying that Thank you. you know you know you know what else is really cool that i love about you is your choice of of uh, of music that you play there was one there was one um tune in particular just i i when I saw that, when I, well, I actually listened to you play it, and I, it just, it, it, it made me, it made me smile. Something stupid. Oh my God! I played that just on Monday night, just a couple nights I, ago. I couldn't believe I was hearing that from a quote-unquote jazz musician, you know, and all that. How cool was that? Yeah, I love that tune. So I, I stopped playing it for a while and I brought it back like just a few weeks ago. I was like, why did I stop playing this song? It's so sweet and like playful. Yeah, that's a song. I think Jen Condos, the, my bassist, recommended that one. I mean, I, I pull from, I mean, like I, I studied jazz, but I think also being in school for nine years made me and like having to learn so many songs. Right. Um, It made me really specific about songs I choose and like, thinking about like it's like melody harmony and like lyrics or intent of the song and being like right. really specific about like why am i drawn towards it and how can i tell its story or recreate the story and like how i view it um and that one's just a sweet one you know it's like yeah well, well it, it's really obvious i mean you you do you do tell stories with your playing and you do a great job you know um so not only that but you're also physically involved with your music yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's like such a battle. I was like, I made a little video for Instagram the other night. And like, it wasn't even actually the playing while I, while I kept re recording it. I was like, Oh, my God, why am I doing that thing with my face? <laughs> or like, why? Like, it's like, I've gone through periods where I try to like, stop it. But it, ultimately, I'm just like, you know what, I move, I make weird faces. Like for me, it, it is just like the whole body's involved in what's happening. Oh, I think it I think it's great. And it, it and it, you know, to use your term informs it sort of, it informs your intention. You know, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? Because I I, th I think it's great. I mean, don't please don't stop doing that. I, I, no, I, I can't. I've tried. It won't stop. Yeah, because when you when you you know like you'll you'll you know you talk about dynamics. You know, you'll you'll crunch on a note or crunch on a little phrase or a little, and and you're physically involved in it, and that adds to the dynamics of it. So it's it's really really cool for people that maybe haven't seen your videos. I really tell you go to YouTube and look look at Molly Miller and watch her do her thing, listen to her do her thing, um, and then you play in a lot of different circumstances. Obviously, um, you know you're out with Jason Mraz. I know that you've worked with him a, a lot. Uh, Black Eyed Peas. That's an interesting thing. I thought that was yeah. Pretty... That I just I haven't played with them very much, but that was like. I say everything I do is come from like a very organic place. And that was like the musical director was a friend. Like, it's funny, that story. Well, so I had auditioned for a band before and I didn't get it. I was probably 23 or something. Mm -hmm. And then a few years later, I started playing at this like, they call it jazz night at this club called Delilah in West Hollywood. And he was just there every week. I think he was like a promoter for the event, the musical director. He's no longer with them, but the Black Eyed Peas. And it was like he, the musical director for the peas was also the guy who turned me down a few years before. And it was like, <laughs> this like funny full circle thing. And what, you know, um, and then he got me on the gig when the guitar needed a sub. Very cool. Well, that, yeah. that is pretty cool. And obviously the venues you've played, you know, and, and your, uh, you know, in your bio, you talk about places you, you know, you've played all the major venues. With a lot of people. And you, and before COVID you did, you were doing like 200 dates a year. Yeah, I was like, I have, I need to actually, I've been so bad this year, but I normally have a gig journal where like, um, I like every gig I write down. So I kind of, cause I like to keep track. I don't know. So, um, yeah, it was like the, la the, the few years before COVID, it was like probably like between 210 and 220 gigs a year, which I was like, it's a lot now. I, I don't, it, I don't know where I'm at right now. And I, I need to keep, I think it's, it's healthy. It's for me, it's, um, 
it keeps me in check or something. I, I'll like, every time after a gig, I would write down like, the gig was great, like, I like this, but this was frustrating. And I would like really treated it not as just a, like, Molly, you suck, or wow, Molly, you're amazing. Like, it's really not one of those things. I try to like, kind of like, have this as unbiased as possible view as I could of a, of a performance of like, a song I, 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 I was proud of or wasn't proud of and what I wanted to work on it, like kind of informed my practicing. Um, so I need to get back on that because for like four years I've been doing the gig journal and I, I made it a few months this year and then I, I got off the wagon. You know, you will if you want to and you know, not if you don't. I would, I would really put any pressure on it. But that is a, that's a lot of gigging because, you know, you went to USC. That's where you got your, your doctorate from. And now you're at the LA College of Music. You know, you're the chair yeah. of the guitar department there. I'm actually now, right now, so this last semester, I was at both. I was actually at USC as well. Oh, wow. And I'm, we're sorting out what it'll look like in the future, whether it'll be like just one day a week, because it's, I play a lot too. So it's hard to like, yeah. for me, I'm like a very happy person if I'm like doing some teaching, but also playing. Like I need right. the balance and, and um, time to practice. So well, yeah, finding finding the balance for next year. But I was teaching at USC this semester. So like January 2022, it was like I was supposed to go on a seven week tour. Delta canceled it or Omicron canceled it. And I was I had COVID and I was just like, well, and I, I took off from teaching. I was like, so I have no gigs, no teaching. And I got COVID. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm a loser, you know, whatever. Oh, no. Yeah. And like, but then the year ended up being like, it's been a busy, great year. And then the someone at you, like my old professor at USC who runs the department now, Nick Stubis called me. He's like, can you sub? We need to sub. I was like, sure. I have nothing on my calendar. Who's, who's running USC now? Nick Stubis. It was Frank Potenza, but Nick's running. Yeah. I'm, I knew Frank and I, I actually, I, I know, I know, I, I don't know Nick. I know we've talked, you know, some and all of that. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a fun year. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And so the LA College of Music, so you're there, you're at USC, you're gigging, you're recording, you're gigging your own gig. And yeah. then you, I know you got something, I think you and Jason are going out pretty soon. Isn't that true? Yeah, it, yes, totally. Yes. I'm going out with Jason and then my trio, we're going out in like two weeks. We're doing some California stuff, yeah. we're playing Monterey in September get it some Atlanta stuff. So it's just like, oh, we're playing Iowa Jazz Fest. It's like, I thought this summer was gonna be mellow, but it's not, yeah. it's like a busy, exciting summer. Um, and yeah, and it's, I'm like, I'm just trying to make sure I get to practice because that keeps me sane. My, well, my boyfriend you know, knows. Yeah, well, you're, you're, you know, I wouldn't exactly say you're a slacker. You know, I would think you, yeah. you, got, you got it going pretty strong. <laughs> yeah, I have. High octane fuel. We started a series a while back um, about pedals. To pedal or not to pedal, that is the question. Ooh. Ooh. And the, the very first person I asked the question of was Peter Bernstein out of New York. You know, Peter. I love Peter Bernstein. Yeah. I've been a fan of his since I was like in high school. Oh, geez, don't tell him that. He'll be, his heart will be a guy. Really? No, I'm like a big fan he'll, of his. He'll, he'll yeah. feel old if you tell him big fans is high school. That's oh, good. well, that wasn't, I mean, No, I, 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 I'm joking. But <laughs> Peter, Peter's a genius. He's just great. Yeah. But he's he's not a pedal guy. He, he's yeah. a, a guitar into the amp guy. And so the, the pedal, to pedal or not to pedal, that is the question. Uh, I, I think I know the answer to this, but um, nobody wants to know about my answer to this. They want to hear you talk about it. Where are you with pedals? I am in the middle because like right now when I mostly when I'm practicing, I'm, I'm honestly just like guitar into an amp with reverb and like, but when I'm like prepping for a gig or maybe like trying to figure out the, the final step stages of a song. I'm pedaling. I, I, I say like 95% of what's happening with your guitar, if not more, 99% is your hands. Like this is the key to everything with the guitar. Then there is like a little bit where it's like informs like, okay, what's your guitar? What's your cable? What's your amp? And then pedals. And I think pedals will open up a new world. Cause for me, I get so comfortable in like how I play, what I do. And then when I introduce new pedals, I think it's like different sides of your personality come out and also sometimes a song calls for it um 
whether you want some like big airy reverb that's like more dramatic or like some heavy distortion that will definitely make you play different and feel cooler. You know, it's just like, <laughs> and trem, I love trem. There's like so many, I was messing around with the flanger the other day and I'm just like, this is so fun. Um, so I'm like, I'm often like existing in a non-pedal world when I'm practicing because I, I wanna have clarity on my tone. But um, if I'm out at a gig, or like I'm mostly using a pedal board and I have a lot of fun with it. And same when I'm practicing, sometimes I will like bring out a new pedal. Like I'm, I just got this organizer or this like Earthquaker devices pedals and like messing around with that. I can't, I don't want to show you my cabinet right here. That's just like stacked with pedals of like, Ooh, this could be fun. I love a pog, you know, on my new record. Um, we just recorded last month and I like, I did something I'd never done before. I'm really excited about it. I um we went stereo, but we went two different pedal boards. So it was kind of like a like safer Molly pedal board of like, ooh, maybe I'll put a little overdrive, some trim, maybe a little delay and like reverb, nothing too crazy. And then I had like another pedal board that was like like way more stuff like compression and pog, um, not pog, um, memory man, like the, I used a memory man on a bunch of stuff and just some different like modulation sounds. And so I have the choice because that way it felt less scary. So we recorded and we can like blend the two sounds and I'm very excited about that. Tell me about the new record. Let's talk about that. Yeah, it probably won't be out for a year because that's how the world works, whatever. So 2023, get ready for this record. So this was um, songs that me, me, Jen, me, Jen and Jay have like written and arranged over the last two years, basically, like during quarantine, right at the top of quarantine. Like I wrote a few, I wrote a couple songs. I wrote some new music and Jen had like this vision. She wanted a wet a, a record of westerns. So she'd send me part of a song and I'd finish it, or I'd send her part of a song and she'd finish it. And so we like wrote a bunch of western esque songs as well. So there's kind of a combination of like songs that I think are like um uh the next step of St. George, that record, mm -hmm. um like very like the, the next phase of me plus like a combination of this like whole western vibe which has been so fun um so jen jay and i as soon as like we got vaccinated a year into like sending each other files and recording and getting ideas um we arranged all this music and so it's like we had like 15 songs we'll probably have like 12 songs on the record um yeah, and it, we recorded it. We're gonna do a couple of, like percussion overdubs, but Jay's out with Allison Krauss and Robert Plant, so that probably probably won't actually finish it all, like till the end of the year, I would imagine, with like the mixing and mastering. And then like it takes like six months to get vinyl, so we'll probably put it out. I imagine next summer or something. You know, that's a that's a hell of a trio that you've got. Oh my god, I love yeah. them. Yeah. yeah, it's a hell of a trio. I mean, it's like it's it's fun to listen to. It's fun to watch. So is that the is that the group you're going to be touring with when you come? Are you coming to Atlanta with them, or, or are you going to pick up some people down here? That'll be a pickup group, which I have never. But they're like you know Ty Bailey, he's a, an incredible organ player, uh -huh. and then Zach Albetta. So that'll be a pickup group, but of musicians I know. Um, yeah. And so no, because J Jen J and I no, well hopefully the the trio will go out to Atlanta um, as well, whether maybe like the in the fall or something i'm trying to figure it all out it's hard i'm like if anyone's listening i need an agent i'm like <laughs> i'm like i send enough emails already for school stuff so like trying i've been like booking all our own gigs and stuff and like trying to put little mini tours together um which is fun but just like it's a job you know like it's a lot it's a lot you, you, uh, the last question i'm gonna ask you before we go and this is this is it's kind of a heavy question kind of sort of hopefully not your education education player you know some people you hear people say well don't go to freaking school because that's a waste of time blah, 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 blah. Yeah. and then you got the people that say oh man you know you got to study every mode every this every that every you know otherwise you you know i, I i'm just going to tell you i come down in the middle of that i think you it's, it's the old learn everything you can forget all that shit and play you, you know yeah no I agree because I I think I've seen the issues on both sides working in education and outside just as a professional and being a student like it's so important to know what you're doing and have a foundation like for me when I see people who want to be professional musicians but don't want to have any depth to it is how it feels 
Um, but then the other spectrum of people who just like overstudy and don't play. And then it just sounds kind of like they just spend too much time in school and that informs so much of them. And like, I definitely had a moment where I was like, okay, like school is school and I have to take that information, but like, I have to detach myself from it and just become my own person. Um, yeah. So for me, I think it's very important because I, I, I see a huge issue now where everyone's just learning online and they don't have formal training, but their, their knowledge is so patchy. It's like the, and shallow, they'll like kind of understand something and kind of know this and kind of, and it like kind of just leads to nothing. Um, as in like, you're not, you're not a well-rounded player. And I'm not saying you have to go to music college or have to have like, but there has to be, I think, some linear understanding and a strong foundation of what we are doing. Um, otherwise, to me, it's like, you can't fully express yourself. You can do some things, but you can't fully express yourself. Particularly if you're playing with other people that are yeah. informed, yeah. you know? And, you know, you can't explain that to people that haven't ex experienced it. You I know. Try, you try and it's like trying to teach a, a you know, a, a dog geometry. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, I don't, I don't want to say it, but you can't, you can't really explain it that, you know, like if you're dealing with, with Jen and Jay and, and you have a musical idea, you know, they'll understand what that musical idea is that without, without even talking about it, you know, okay. you don't have to say, well, we're going to do this in this bar and that, you know, you have to say, hey, you just, oh, wow, she's doing that. Or yeah, that's a great idea. And they'll, and they'll, they'll know what all the derivations of that are and run yes. with it. Cause I, I see him playing timpani, you know? And in your in your thing, I'm seeing him, you know, uh, you know, playing like a symphonic play. You know, I'm seeing what's totally. Cool. Yeah, it's like freaking awesome. I go, I wow, that's really cool. It's yes, yes. Everyone's their own little orchestra, and we yeah. come together and breathe together. That's the goal. But really, like what you're talking about is like kind of my favorite way to play is where you mm -hmm. don't say anything, and you just start playing because you have to be so present. I just had a gig a couple nights ago. I hadn't played with this bass player who's amazing, Joshua Crumbly. Uh, we were like played together in high school. We played like in honors bands together and with this pop artist in high school together. And we hadn't played together in 15 years. He just got off the road with Leon Bridges. He plays with Terrence Blanchard. He's a great player. And like, it was kind of like, I didn't say anything. I'd be like, okay, here's, let's do the song or here's a chart, but let's just, you know. And we're all just like listening and present and the music then like, the music represented the moment. And I think that's what I love. Cripple Creek. Yeah. I love that video of Cripple, Cripple Creek, you know? Just, oh, that's like, fun with totally like that. Like yeah. we just played. I loved like those, that's such a badass band. Like Tamir is a dear friend. Alex is awesome. I don't, I haven't played with him that. That was my first time playing with Alex, the bass player. Yeah. Tamir and I, he's like a brother to me. And, and Josh, I'm really close with too. Joshua Ray Gooch, the other guitarist. Yeah, it was, that was really, really cool. Well, listen. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming and talking to us today. I really Thank do. You. Thanks a bunch. You're great. You're Thank absolutely you. great. I, I admire what you're doing so much. I really do. You're really, you're, you're doing some really, excuse the expression, but some really cool shit. You really are. <laughs> Thank you. That means a lot. You really are. You're doing some cool shit. Keep doing it. It's just, it's so, it's so rare that I go, you know, I pick up or watch a video of someone go, holy, you know, who was that? <laughs> I mean, I, I was on the, you know, emailing and trying to get a hold of you within seconds of watching your videos. I would just said, I, you know, yeah, this is, she's, this is wonderful. Thank My you. best to you. Well, this is Bob Baker with Molly Miller for Jazz Guitar Today and see you later on. Cool. Thanks, Bob. Bye-bye.